my loves and welcome back to my channel today we're gonna make Persian steamed rice you're going to cook this rice in boiling water with oil and salt just like pasta however unlike pasta Persian rice gets steamed think of it this way it requires a spa treatment each and every grain of rice becomes its own entity and a pearl from heaven so please give this video a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Persian steamed rice is usually made with basmati rice that is a long grain rice. The grains hold their shape better during the steaming process and don't stick together. This results in a fluffy steamed rice with long grains. So for this particular dish I will be using 5 cups of basmati rice and the the bag comes with this cute little cup which is perfect for measuring it you need table salt or sea salt to flavor the dish and vegetable oil such as canola oil additionally you need lavash bread or some sort of flat bread such as matzah or flour tortilla for the bottom of the pan I will use the flatbread to make teddy, which I'll show you in a little bit. Alright, my rice has been rinsed out two to three times and I have soaked it in water for about six hours. Additionally, you need saffron for the garnish, but this is totally optional since saffron can be relatively expensive. I have filled my rice cooker with 10 cups of water. Once it's brought to a brisk broil over high heat, I'm going to add one teaspoon to one tablespoon of table salt. You will need to allow room for the rice that you will be adding. We will drain the rice once it's semi-cooked so you don't have to worry about the dish tasting too salty. You want to make sure to tilt the lid so the water won't boil and spill over. To drain my rice, I'm going to use a colander. The, the smaller the openings, the better. Add the drained rice and continue cooking over medium to high heat, stirring occasionally. You want to bring it to another boil while stirring it a couple of times very gently with a large slotted spoon or spatula to make sure the grains are not clumping together. As you can see, the rice is semi-cooked and it is ready to be drained again. The par cooked rice is ready when it is soft around the edges but still firm in the center. So we're going to drain the rice for the last time and move on to our tadig. To make the lavash tadig, heat the oil over medium high until it just starts to sizzle. And arrange several pieces of lavash to cover the bottom of the pot in a single layer some overlaying is okay. Tadig is a Persian term which refers to the bottom of the pot. This has been long used in the Persian cuisine. And once our dish is cooked, it'll become the most crunchy golden crust. Transfer the rice carefully with a slotted spoon or spatula to the pot and cover the bread pieces and gradually decrease the area as you continue adding more rice. So once all the rice is transferred to the pot, it resembles a pyramid. Once the rice has been transferred into the pot, add three to four tablespoons of vegetable oil. This will prevent the rice grains from sticking to each other. I'm using a pretty large spoon, that's why I'm only adding two spoons. Additionally, you need to add three to four tablespoons of hot water to prevent the rice from drying out in the steaming process. And when this step is completed, I'm going to use the end of my spoon to make a couple holes in the rice to speed up the steaming process. 
I'm going to cover the pot with its lid and heat the pot over medium low heat for 5 to 15 minutes depending on the quality of your rice and then turn the heat off. To make saffron water for the garnish, mix together half a teaspoon of crushed saffron threads and one fourth of a cup of hot water. Steep for a few minutes until the water becomes yellow. Voila! I have decorated my dish by mixing saffron water with 8 tablespoons of steamed white rice. You can use this intensely vibrant yellow rice to make designs on the dish. Persian rice is the most important component of some Persian dishes, specifically all of the stews known as khorosh and some of the kebabs. The standard white rice can be served with almost any khorosh, though traditionally some of the khorosh can be served with different types of rice. The cooking technique for all types of rice starts the same way as the white rice. Then, depending on the recipe, the white rice is mixed with dried fruits, nuts, herbs, or vegetables. These ingredients are usually added after the steaming process is finished. As you can see, our tadig has become quite golden. It's super crunchy and it has a very unique texture to it. All right, beautiful people. We're coming to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed watching this and learned something new. Please don't forget to smash the like button and follow us on Instagram at Flavorsome Kitchen. I hope to see you in my next video. Take care.